So, summary of the uh, empirical findings. When we give methamphetamine in the lab acutely, it improves cognitive performance. Now, when you look at some of the brain imaging studies, we have noted some differences. But these differences may be within the normal range of human variability. And the notion that methamphetamine users are impaired is simply not supported by the weight of the scientific evidence. Now, this is not, I should tell you, my goal is not to minimize real problems seen with methamphetamine abuse, because there are real problems. One of the main problems is that people do not sleep when they're taking methamphetamine. Now, if you don't sleep and you're not taking methamphetamine, you will have problems. Sleep is one of the most important human functions. So that is real, very real. I don't want to minimize that, but what I do want to highlight is that many of us researchers, we find what we look for. So and when we think about the lost key analogy, we look under the spotlight because that's where the, that's where the light is shining and we find typically what we're looking for. We researchers are looking for pathology, disease, illness, and that's what we find for. We're not looking for beneficial effects. And so you must understand, when you read the literature, you are not going to obtain a comprehensive understanding of methamphetamine's effects. That's not our goal. So if you understand that when you're interpreting the literature, we are increasing the intellectual tone of our discussion. <laughs> so, take home message. The clinical picture is not as bleak as the anecdotal reports would suggest. Now, when we think about anecdotal reports, I encourage, I beg you to discard belief systems with no foundation in evidence. When I hear people talking about how awful methamphetamine is, it makes me cringe because it's simply not true. Somebody just said, what about the 10 hour horny problem? And that person just said it. Uh, it's only a problem if you can't get it up. But let me, let me seriously address this 10-hour horny problem. Hang on, let me address the 10-hour horny problem. Now, one of the things that methamphetamine does, it's really good at vasoconstriction. That means it decreases the blood flow. If you want to get an erection, one of the things you need is vasodilation. So this notion that people are having sex for all these hours because that certainly, initially, you certainly can have an erection and you can perform longer and so forth. But ultimately, you're going to have this vasoconstriction problem. So is, I hope that's clear, all right? Now, I understand that science has solved few problems. I understand that. And so we must act. And when I say act, I mean treatment, education, policy, when our scientific knowledge is incomplete. That's a fact. Any responsible society should do that, and we should do precisely that. But we must also be cognizant of the fact that our knowledge is incomplete. And being cognizant of this will make sure that we are prepared to alter our actions when new and more complete information becomes available and dictates. We failed to do this with crack cocaine. We've known for many years, since the early 90s, that crack cocaine and powder cocaine were the same drug. But it wasn't until August 2010 that we had some relief in that awful policy that punished crack a hundred times more harshly than powder cocaine. And the relief that we got is still not the solution, but it is some relief. Finally, I'd like to leave you with this note. Use common sense. If some people or somebody is saying some incredible story about drugs and it seems outrageous, it probably is. That's quite simple. And this is a copy of the paper that reviews everything that I just said. 
is published in Neuropsychopharmacology, and thank you all for your time.